Hello there, I'm glad you clicked. Now on this video, I'm gonna take you through step by step and show you exactly how to get started on this business that is profitable and potentially able to earn you 800 to 1200 and sometimes more than that. All what you need to do is very simple. Just sit back, relax and watch this video to the end so that you understand exactly how do I get started. And guess what? This idea I'm not I'm gonna share with you is not a rocket science kind of a thing. It's not like overly newly discovered idea. It's a thing that we've been seeing it out there and has been all around if you were to look. And guess what? What I'm gonna do is simplify it, make it simpler for you to understand. And perhaps you've been thinking like, okay, you must have a lot of money for you to get started with business. No, that is not the case. You can always start somewhere. I always say that each and any given business has three versions. We have the smaller one, the medium, and the bigger one, or the larger one. And you can always start somewhere, grow yourself, propagate yourself to the point whereby you can now call yourself a big business. And guess what? If this is the first time you're watching this channel of mine, my name is Joseph. Talk about business, investment, and anything related to exactly that. And I usually post a video each and every day. If you don't want to miss any piece of my good videos, it is very simple. This is what you need to do. And by the way, it is free. doesn't cost you anything. Just down below there on your right, there is a button written subscribe. It is in black. Hit that magical button, like this video, comment down below and tell me what you think. And by doing only that, a whole YouTube thing will notify you whenever I upload a new good video. So that is the only qualifications that you need. So without wasting, wasting time and further ado, let's get into this business. All right now, here you are. And I've said on you looking for a way how you can be able to make 800 to 1200 Kenyan shillings each and every day. This is what you need to do. With only 45,000, you can get started with a grocery business. But how do we get started and how do you actually actualize this? This is how you do it, all right? Step by step. Number one, the very first important thing to do or understand is the location. And the most amazing thing to do with the location is that the location connects you with the target customers as well as determines how much you're gonna use in terms of the budgeting. What do I mean by that? The location determines who you are, your target customers, all right? So if you start a business in upcountry whereby the island rural people, then probably you're targeting farmers. But if you put a business in somewhere where you have the residential area, probably you're targeting the family units. Those are your target customers. So it's very good to understand who are your target customers. Once you understand who are your target customers, then the target customers can they resonate to the business. If it's a tick, that's good. The next point on that location is that it determines how much you're going to use in terms of your budgeting. What do I mean by exactly that? Can you take this very simple example? The price of starting like an electronic shop in a CBD and the same same electronic shop starting it in outskirts of a given town. Of course, the rent is high, the permit, the licensing and all those kind of things is quite high. Some of the shops actually require what we call the goodwill, which is a non-refundable. So the location determines how much you're going to use when you're starting that specific business. For example, starting a business in Nairobi is regarded as quite high compared to starting a business in Kakamega. With all the due respect to Kakamega, but that doesn't mean that you cannot be able to succeed in Kakamega. Neither can you uh, do so on Nairobi. The point is this location of where you want to start this business is the very essential thing. So on the location, if you were to stress a little bit because it's an important thing, of course, here on my business, we are targeting a residential area, place where people reside. All right. It's hardly will you see a grocery store in the CBD. What we do, we set up a business in some place whereby we have a residential area. If you're in Nairobi, you can talk of South Sea, South B, you can talk of East Lees where people reside, you can talk of Pipeline, you can talk of Kawangware and such other places, all right? So the point here, you're targeting where people reside because the product that you're selling are products that are usually consumed each and every day, all right? So that's the point. If you live in Nakuru, you can just talk of outskirts of Nakuru. If you live in Kisumu, you can talk of Nyamasaria, you can talk of Kamas, you can talk of all those kind of areas. Anyway, I'm not going to say uh, specific names of given towns, but what you understand is that you target the residential areas of any given town, all right? So after that, we go to the next step. And the next step is setting up. Setting up this specific business, what does it require? Of course, you need to have yourself some shelving, meaning where you place your products or the produce that you're selling to people. You cannot just place them on the ground. You need to have them yourself like a simple woodwork. And on this particular point, you need to actually do it on a budget because we aren't having a luxury of money here. Of course, what you need to do is get yourself not so overpriced wood or what you need to do is get some yourself some quite loose, nice looking uh, kind of a woodwork. You put yourself some shelving for the sake of the greeneries and the fruits because they surely go bad immediately. Because we do not have a, a plan of buying a, a cooling system like the freezer, the fridge and what have you 
when you are starting up all right so you need to have yourself a very cool place where those uh, specific produce can be able to rest all right at this particular point, I would suggest you budget yourself like 15,000. If it goes at most, 15,000 goes towards you buying or rather setting up that specific shop in the shelving in Waterview. 10K of, let's talk of like, um, uh, hey, maybe this, let's say the shop it costs you like 6,000, 6,000 plus the, the deposit that is 12,000 plus the 15,000 that goes for 21,000. So the shop, the renting and the, the the branding of that specific place, or rather the, the shelving and what have you, goes with 21,000. Let's keep on going, all right? So now, the next step is this. is the payment. Uh, it's called the payment system. Now, the payment system, of course, this is a way of how people will be paying you. Say people don't show up with cash and some want to pay you with their, their phones and what have you. You can set up either Lipa and Pesa, or you can set up yourself what we call uh, the pay bill number and such kind of a thing. Also, also be open up to the people who are paying cash as well but for me i usually prefer uh you know having a payment method whereby it's as an electronic one not really for the customers the customers can pay me cash but i can as well deposit that money so that i can be able to monitor how my cash flow is flowing in so that i understand how my business is running all right so we move to the next level the next level is about the licensing and the permits what exactly does this mean licensing and the permits this is what you need for you to operate that business legally because if you don't then you're going to rub shoulders with the government and this specific, this specific thing means that you're closing up whenever you hear that they're coming around and such kind of a thing of course you may not be able to adhere all the rules and regulations that are required by the government but if you can then try as much as you can to make sure that you do otherwise if you don't you're going to have yourself in a lot of trouble remember here you're dealing with food so hygiene has to be the highest Order. The permits here, of course, you get it from the county council of the specific county that you hail from. Yeah, this one goes for 5000 if I'm not wrong, at most. That's the amount of money that you need. But stand corrected. Different counties charge different amounts of money. I'm referring to my own county. 5000 is required for you to get started with this specific business. The other thing that is much important on this is that the branding. The branding here simply means that you setting up that specific thing that resonates with you. The color, the theme of the color, the color theme, and all those kind of things. I prefer here branding yourself with nice overcoats and, of course, having yourself like green crates whereby you can be able to put your greeneries like the... Uh, the skuma wiki, the cabbages, the 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 the, the, ho -ho, the, briganya, the cucumbers, the all those kind of things. Of course, you have to have that theme of green, all right? Because here you're dealing with the greens, or rather, you're dealing with the groceries, okay? So the other thing, of course, you have to have a section of the fruits, and the fruits here meaning that you have to sell different varieties of the fruits. But there is a trick. You're starting up a grocery business is quite a sensitive, a, a very sensitive business, meaning you do not overstock yourself. By the way, where are we in terms of the budgeting? We did say the 5,000 goes towards paying your permits or licensing. Now we had 21,000, now we have 26,000, remaining with like 20,000 or 19,000 or so. And remember one thing, buying fruits worth 5,000, that's a lot of fruits. And of course, we cannot be able to buy that fruit. And I wouldn't advise you to do exactly that. By the way, even a thousand bob is enough for you to actually getting started with you buying fruits. That's for sure. What I would advise you to do is this. When you're starting up, do not overbuy things or overstock your business and then believing that people will just show up the first time you set up your business. All what you need to do, monitor how there is on it. Monitor what people want and monitor how it goes around. And with doing exactly that, then your business will be good. Rather than you stocking with a perishable goods. Because honestly speaking, dealing with grocery business, these are perishable goods and if you overstock them of course at the end of the day you might get yourself kucho maker that's what we say in kenya like you get a lot of losses due to fact that they go bad easily or at a very short period of time of course you need to make sure that you stock in a very systematic manner branding as well meaning that maybe you can employ somebody who can do the deliveries of course you have to be a little bit creative unique in how you operate your business you can do the deliveries maybe from the residential areas and such kind of a things okay so all what you need to do at this particular point is to be creative offer different services and as well when i say different services i mean like the same services but do it in a different way that's how you make money and that's why i always tell people you do not not have to invent a whole of a new business idea for you to exist or what you need to do you can do the existing one we usually call it the me too but what you can do is add on top of it space it up a little bit with creativity and how you do things be an outgoing individual and that's how you become successful in business now going to the next step of course i did talk about stocking how you're supposed to stock 
uh, you're supposed to talk uh, uh, what goes bad easily of course you have to reduce it in number and what actually has a little bit of a longer shelf life of course you have to stock it a little bit in terms of high quantity right at that particular point also quality matters a lot you can be able to grade your selling prices depends on the quality of the product that you're selling sometimes can be you can be guided by the quantity because if the quality is constant with all the produce that you have then you can be guided by the quantity and that's how you be able to grade your system and how you can sell to your target customers the other thing of course you need to have is what we call the customer services this is a point that people usually tend to omit a lot because they don't find it necessary or important customer services are far much important when you're starting up any given business all right and when we saw we talk about customer services of course you have to understand there are different types of customers whom you're gonna meet in that specific business some customers reason it with you some customers tend not to be reasonable but guess what we always say the customers are always right because we know the back of our heads is not true, the customer's not always right, but anyway, we need that money that is in their pocket, so we have to massage their ego and tell them that they're always right. Meaning that you have to work on your before sale services. Basically, before sale services tells that or gives a customer a reason why they should buy from your place. And after sale services, of course, these are services that actually gives a reason to a customer why they should come back. And the most amazing thing is that they should not come back alone but with different people and this is the only occasion you can be able to transform your customers to become the ambassadors of your business and that's the most important thing that you can ever do in business all right now we go to the next level the next level is about the financial management system this is a thing that you cannot be able to afford to meet or rather to omit in your business you have to understand how the money is flowing in flowing out the cash in the cash out the operational cost the gross revenue the net revenue all those kind of things how much do you pay yourself how much of all those kind of things you need to understand them you need to understand what product is moving what product is not moving for you to understand exactly next time when i'm stocking what should i overstock what should i understock so that at least you don't get yourself on a crisis the point is this you find like an individual who is operating a business you ask them how much do you pay yourself they act surprisingly what am i supposed to pay myself yeah you're supposed to pay yourself anyway guys those those are the things that you need to understand when you're starting up a business otherwise if you do contrary to what exactly i've just said you're gonna get yourself into things you're gonna get yourself into troubles all right but anyway guess what we all do things differently all what i've done on my research as far as this business is concerned it is exactly what you're supposed to do. I've consulted the relevant individuals who are operating the same business and that that's what I've gathered. If you stick to that, then rest assured, being successful is not a question of when, or rather if, but when. Anyway, if you would like to get a ready business plan of the same business that I've talked about, it is ready for you. It's only 300 and, or rather 280 Kenyan shillings. You can grab my number from the description of this specific video. Give me a call or text me on WhatsApp to get your copy and we can start it. Anyway, if you would like as well to get the financial management systems and skills and consultations, what have you, how about you give me a call? We talk about few things. I don't know if I read some things and such kind of thing. For just a cup of coffee, we get started. For now, it's a goodbye and see you in the next one.